How'd you like to drive a truck like this? <laughs> What's up, you guys? As you've probably seen by the title of this video, we wanted to talk about how to get into expediting and drive a straight truck like we do. We get a lot of questions from people, whether on our videos, oh, how do I get into that? I want to get into what you do. I love your truck. Or yeah. even when we're parked at truck stops, people will come up and ask us about expediting or what do we do, yeah. you know? Our, our, our most recent video that just blew up, I think it's almost at like 600,000 views or something of our truck tour. We got huge growth, bunch of subscribers out of it. So we got a bunch of new people. We've been doing videos about the expediting and how to get into it and, you know, things that we've been successful at and you know we've been doing it for what four years now so making videos yeah, yeah. Now, if you're interested in expediting we recommend going to the playlist i'll link it up here yeah, yeah go into our playlist and scroll through and look at videos that you know talk about this expediting process how you're paid how you know all this stuff because yeah. i mean we're getting comments how do i lease a truck like that and you don't lease a truck like this yeah so that's it, why we wanted to sit yeah. down and do kind of a just a quick overview of how you can get started in expediting and get into a truck like this yeah so really the first step of course is research 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 Research, research. If you're watching our videos, that's part of research. There's other YouTubers out here that drive straight trucks, that do expediting, watch their videos. There's all kinds of info, of course, on YouTube. But the biggest resource that we always recommend to check out is expeditorsonline.com. It's huge, huge resource. It's a whole community of expediters, whether it be straight truck, van drivers, tractor trailer drivers, but there's so much information on there. And they cover news and trucking they you know they got people who write blogs they got a forum section they got a classified section you can look for fleet owners you can post an ad you can look for drivers to team with all, all kinds of stuff everything you can find about expediting you can find on expediters online and that's where we started our research or yeah. i should say jason that's how he first found out about expediting is through expediters online yeah it's a wealth of information now one one thing that we see a lot is uh tractor trailer guys who are tired of being in tractor trailer pulling the trailers and see this as an option and they want to come over into this you know mm -hmm. and a lot of husband and wife teams and just because you have experience in trucking don't mean you're going to be experienced at doing expediting. It's a different ball game over here doing this stuff. So don't think you know it all and take your time to do more research. Right. Absolutely. And another great place to research is Facebook. If you have Facebook, there's a lot of groups out there that on Facebook on expediting. You know, just go on Facebook and type in expediting and yeah, I'm yeah. sure a bunch will come up. Research is the key. You know, ask questions, talk to other drivers. Anybody who reaches out to us, we always try to help them as much as we can and get back. It may take us a little bit, but a lot of the other expediters out here will do that too. We're all yeah. pretty friendly and yeah, we're yeah. all willing to help, you know. Yeah. So that's the first thing. Once you you've researched and you've decided, okay, you know, I think this is what I want to do. If you're not already in trucking and have a CDL, the next step is you're, you need to get a CDL. To drive the kind of truck we drive, you have to have a class B CDL with air brakes. Yeah. You don't need a class A. You can have a class A, that's fine, but the minimum is a class B. Yeah. Now to get that, there's all kinds of ways to do that. We did a video, gosh, several years back, how we got our CDLs. Jason has a class A, I have a class B. Yeah. I'll link that video up here, but then you're gonna have to figure out how to do your CDL. There's schools you can t go to. There's several ways you can get your CDL. Yeah, and one of the biggest things, um like I, I see a lot is uh, if you're a tractor trailer, husband and wife team, don't don't come over into expediting thinking you are you're the commodity kind of mentality. To be successful, you absolutely have to keep an open mind and be open to different ways of running freight because that's what expediting is. W what you're used to in tractor trailer is completely different over here in expediting. You know, just the way we get our loads, how we negotiate sometimes, how we counter offer on different companies. And the sitting, a lot of people, lot you know, we sitting. sit a lot more yeah. than company drivers out in tractor trailer. 
trailers. Yeah. And a lot of people come over here and want to run five, 6,000 miles a week, and you, it just don't work that way every week, you no. know? And but the, the miles we do run pay very good. You know, you, you, you make a very good rate. I don't want to make this video about how much we make, how much you can make, you know? I mean, there's a ton of people out here doing expediting, and if you couldn't make a living at it, nobody would be doing it, right, okay? Exactly. So <laughs> it's not, it, uh, it, can you make money at doing this? And that's the question we get all the time. Can you even make money doing this? Well, yeah, that's the wrong question though. You need to be asking, how do I make money doing this? Yeah. You know, that yeah. that is the trick to this expediting. And if you're not learning and being open-minded and you really have to be able to take the punches too sometimes. Yeah. If you're a person that can't take the punches and can't roll with it and you get beat up and get back up and you, if you're having an attitude because something went wrong sometime you're you're, you're not going to make it yeah you, you know you, you'll just skim by and barely make make what you're making now so right and we've always said too if you have a lot of debt already this is not something to get out into to get you out of debt yeah because you don't make a consistent weekly check no. one week you may make a really really good check and then the next week it won't be as great. So it's not a consistent type of uh, business. It's up and down, just like trucking, just we fill it a little bit more, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And <coughs> to get back to the CDL thing, when you do get your CDL, or if you already have your CDL and don't have this yet, you need to get hazmat endorsement and tanker endorsement. Those, those two endorsements. endorsements are a yeah. must. We've talked about this in many videos. The more qualifications you have, the more your opportunity you're going to have to do more loads. And that goes for tractor trailer too. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, unless you're just with a, a company who hauls certain kind of freight and that's all they haul. Now, a lot of tractor trailer guys out there, they run for a company who never haul hazmat. So a lot of them have let their hazmat go mm -hmm. or, you know, they just don't use it because they never haul hazmat. But in expediting, you want to open that opportunity up because if you're sitting in a city trying to get a load or waiting for a call, um, you could get passed over because you don't have your hazmat or because you don't have your passport mm -hmm. or because you don't have tanker endorsement. You know, you, you, you want to make sure you have all those qualifications. To drive a truck like this, this is a dream truck right here, you know? <laughs> One thing to, to, to keep in mind, we've been out here seven years now. It's taken us seven years to get to this point. And a lot of hard a work and A lot of hard work and sacrifice. And that's another thing. We were talking about this earlier is be prepared to make sacrifices out here. No, I mean, trucking in general is a job that you sacrifice a lot. Absolutely. Missing birthdays, you yeah, know, missing yeah. family yeah. time. In order to be successful, especially in the beginning, is you have to be prepared to stay out here. You're not gonna come out here and work a week and be home every weekend. You need to be prepared to stay out a minimum four to six weeks at a time. And, and that's why we have these big sleepers, you know, that we want the amenities to be able to make sure we're comfortable to stay out for a very long time. You know, I mean, I gosh, we, we stay out three, four, five, six months sometimes, you know, and I'm not saying you have to do that, but, um, you know, most uh, fleet owners, there are a lot of fleet owners who own trucks like these that they'll hire drivers for, and they build these custom sleeper trucks because they want you to be comfortable out here. Yeah, they know if you're comfortable, you're going to stay out longer. You're going to want to stay out longer because yeah. you have the amenities you yeah. need. Yeah. And it's going to make you more productive. And then, of course, that just trickles down to them and it's going to make them money, too. Yeah. That's really something to keep in mind. Be prepared and, and, to, I mean, I know yeah. we make it look like all fun and games out here and like we're having the time of our life and living our dream, but... We, we, we work really, really hard sometimes. It may and not look like it in our videos, yeah. <laughs> but know, we I do, mean, you know? We've been working really hard for a very long time <laughs> to get to where we're at today. You know, it, it wasn't just handed to us. You know, we started out. Oh, when we first started, believe me, we weren't staying out three, four, five months at a time. No. No, we've no. worked our way up to this. And, yeah, yeah. You know, we love being out. That's just us. You definitely have to be prepared for that. Yeah. And as Jason was saying, a lot of fleet owners now are building, you know, not a custom sleeper like this, but like our last truck we had, well, the 96 inch. Some yeah. of the FedEx fleet owners are building, what, 115 inch sleepers. 
with all the amenities. Highfield's building a bunch of 115s. It, you know, if you you work, you put your time in with them, and work. You know, give them a really good year and consistently do what needs to be done to make good money and be a team player. They'll build you a big old truck, almost this big at least. You know, and let you pick everything out. They'll let you pick everything out: colors, uh, bathroom. If you want a bathroom, do you want an undercam? I mean, just everything. They'll let you pick everything out in the truck within reason. But right. and that's why we've always recommended the Highfield uh, as a fleet owner, just because they really take care of their drivers. That they know that's what it takes to be successful out here the driver drivers has to be comfortable but don't expect them or any fleet or for that matter don't expect it earn it right you know? exactly i mean you've got to produce for that <coughs> which brings us to the next point of once you've decided you've got your cdls you need to figure out you need to figure out a fleet owner yeah we always recommend don't. driving for a fleet owner at first we have people contact us that want to buy a truck right off the bat <laughs> not that those people are not going to be successful some are some aren't but if you've never been out here doing expediting drive for a fleet owner first yeah now, it, it, i don't i don't it don't matter if you got 15 years in trucking experience no drive for a fleet owner first because if you come out here and buy a truck on your own and don't network and learn the business and but we've seen a lot of people fail. Yeah, I mean, we know a lot of tractor trailer dri drivers that have come over to expediting and they had a rocky start, you yeah, know? Yeah, huge rocky it, start, it's, yeah. It's it's really different. And, and it's very costly, you know? Yeah. That rocky start can be very costly. Absolutely. Learn the business on a fleet owner's dime, you know? And I mean, we know tons of drivers that have been out here for 10 plus years. And still drive for fleet owners. Still drive for, they just don't want to own a truck. Yeah. And I don't blame them because yeah. being an owner operator, I mean, <laughs> you really don't make a whole lot more. I you mean, don't, really. If, if you're running your business right, right, that is, you know, if you're, if you're taking your maintenance fund and going ahead and taking Hawaii trip as an owner operator, it, it you're just fine with a fleet owner. You know, they make really good money. I've heard, you know, nine, 15,000 some weeks, you yeah. know, uh, or months. Yeah, and, and you know, if when we got out here seven years ago, our goal was to own our own truck. Yeah. That was our plan. It took us four years before we bought our first truck. Now, that doesn't mean it's gonna have to take you that long. Some people get out here, they drive six months by a truck, drive a year, it's, that's everybody's, level of when they want to do things is different but at least when you first get out here we highly highly recommend driving for a fleet owner just to learn the business jason mentioned highfield we recommend them we <laughs> have a of ton of friends did, over there we, we do we have a ton of friends there we've referred people over there that are doing they, awesome they love it now, you know it's not part nothing is ever perfect no. if you're expecting perfection D don't bother no, <laughs> you no. just don't bother and you not know? that there's uh, not other great fleet owners out there you know the fleet owner we used to drive for is phenomenal yeah he's a smaller fleet owner yeah. you know there's no. there's different fleet owners and we really know highfield we know their process we love their their business model that they have and helping drivers and taking care of drivers finding a good fleet owner it's, like that is key it's key because it's key. you can get with the wrong one and uh not do too great or just get with a bad fleet owner and i, I want to i don't want to interrupt ahead, you but ahead, just while ahead. i'm thinking about this you, when you so. said that and you were talking to somebody about this the other day if you see fleet owners out there that are just running tons and tons of ads trying to get drivers on trying you know you, they're always running ads to find drivers that's that's kind of a red flag it's, there's a reason for that you have, you have to <laughs> ask yourself yeah. why do they have so many ads up a good fleet owner, they usually have a wait list for trucks because they they keep their drivers. They their drivers stay on. Now they of course stay. you're you're gonna lose some here and there. People retire, people get sick, people have to go home to always, help yeah. family members. So that's when openings open up. But for the most part, they're good fleet owners keep drivers and they're not having to run hundreds and hundreds of ads on websites and having to promote their name out there. You know, mm -hmm. it, it just raises a huge red, red flag for me. So, mm -hmm. and they make the promises of the world, you know, in those ads, we pay for your CDL training and we reimburse and we pay for uh, this and that, and th we'll pay your orientation. And, you know, they just, promise you the world why are they having to promise all that you know yeah. 
You yeah. really, if they have to go so deep into recruit uh, recruiting, you have to wonder mm -hmm. because good businesses and good companies don't need to recruit like that. Right. Yeah. They and rely on word of mouth and good business. So get, keep that in mind when you're researching, you know, because not, it's not all. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's in the, like you said, it's research, you know, Re don't just take our word for it. No, research. Yeah. Hey, There's all kinds of fleet owners out there, you know, <laughs> but you want to do your research, talk to people that know these fleet owners <laughs> that drive for, you know, if you're looking at a fleet owner, ask to talk to some of the drivers they have, you know, we've yeah. talked about all this before. Again, I don't want to draw it out because this is videos we've talked about yeah. separately, but we're kind of doing this just for a lot of the new people yeah. who have just recently subscribed and, and check out some of our old videos. I know a lot of people have been commenting saying they have been going back and watching mm -hmm. them yeah uh, highly recommend doing it it's a it's a library of, of information and yeah and and another thing to think about too is what carrier do you want to go with yeah. you know there's all different carriers we drive for landstar there's fedex there's panther there's v3 there there's so many expedite carriers out here yeah for the most part they all have their warts yeah none of them are perfect you know no. You, you, you don't say, oh, who's the best company to drive for, you know, but who's the best company for you? Mm -hmm. We like Landstar. We like FedEx. You yeah. know, I, I could see us either place sometimes. Yeah. And I will say, because I know a lot of people see that we drive for Landstar and they want to get on with Landstar. This is not the place to start when you're first starting no, out. No, no, no. At all. No. FedEx, I, if, if anything ever happened with us and Landstar, we would go drive FedEx. FedEx yeah. If anything ever happened where we didn't want to be owner operators anymore, we would go drive for Highfield. Absolutely. That's how much we believe in them yeah. as a fleet owner. Yeah. And yeah. our next best option would be FedEx. Yeah. I agree. That's that's I agree <laughs> to be straight out. That's but, that's but that, you know. like I said before, you know that no company is the best. No, there's not. Not and one of them is the best. They all be have their quirky crazy weird rules that they go by and yeah we used to drive <clears throat> for panther before we came to landstar panther worked for us for four years i loved my experience at panther we you know I, yeah that's where I, we it learned. was tough and they pissed me off a lot <laughs> But, but I, that's where I learned, you know, not a would, bad carrier. would I not be the driver I am today had I not gotten that experience at Panther? Right. You know, I have to ask myself that. And that's right. We just knew there was more opportunity for the freight we wanted to haul at Landstar. Yeah. And that's why we made the switch. Not that Panther was a bad carrier. We know a lot of people over at Panther that they're doing great. No, you know, yeah. they love it. They've yeah. been there years, for years and years so and years. And they love the model. And, and believe me, Panther pisses them off too. Yeah, I mean, you just <laughs> gotta just find, what it is. You gotta find the right fit for you. I would put more emphasis on finding a good fleet owner versus Absolutely. the carrier. Absolutely. And, and go from there. If, if you find a good fleet owner, whatever carrier they're with, some fleet owners are at multiple carriers and can put you on at different carriers. Yeah. The fleet owner you're driving for is going to be the biggest thing. Versus yeah, because you'll carrier. have somebody that can work with you. you right. Know, somebody has, to work yes. with and teach you and. Um, have mentors and driver other friendly drivers that will help you start with that company so yeah that pretty much wraps it up in a nutshell of how to kind of get started in here yeah and, and if you want to drive a truck this like this yeah yeah and but keep in mind you know you're not going to get into this at first no. you know but well there... you know i'll say the truck we started in was a what 750,000 miles it was had an older truck it, it, it was, was an older truck six it, year old truck hey, it, but it did have a 96 inch sleeper it that had the it bathroom had an a, toilet all that ICT or ARI sleeper IC, was it? ICT. ICT sleeper you, it did have the bathroom in you, it you guys coming out here in this business today you don't even know you guys are getting some <laughs> nice old trucks to get into compared yeah. to what we started in yeah. but I love that truck though if Dave you're watching this oh we I, love I did, that truck, I, I, did. I wanted we, to buy it from him we we did. Uh, we I actually did. asked I him before I, we, I when we were thinking truck. about buying a truck, because we asked him if he wanted to sell it. Never left us on the side of the road. We had 1.1 million miles on it by the time he bought us a new truck. And, and he, it was still running still even running. after that. Still yeah. Still running. I mean, he, put, was, he put a solo a guy in it truck. and yeah, ran it. So, but you guys are spoiled these days. So yeah. I don't want to even hear it. Why don't hear no complaining <laughs> or crying about your truck? Uh, no. One quick thing. I know. I'm sorry. I don't want to drag it out, but you just brought up something that I did want to 
touch quickly on is yeah. solo drivers and expediting. Yeah, we yeah. get a lot of people yeah. asking about that. There are successful solo drivers out here. We don't know really any fleet owners hiring solo drivers. So you, do, you don't get into expediting as a solo and expect to make a ton of money. Expect to make a ton of money. You need to know the business inside and yeah. out, how to operate, how to uh, you know manage your income and pro and make your business profitable to like top notch you have to be the best of the best to be able to come out here and get into expediting as a solo without that you're just going to skim by and eventually fail yeah it's really geared towards team drivers it is whether it it's, really really is. it's husband wife same yeah. household brother sister whatever yeah, yeah. It's really, those are the, gonna be the most successful and that's what a lot of fleet owners look for because they know that's yeah. gonna make them the most money. Yeah. So yeah, I just wanted to touch on that real quick. But cool, I, that's I all we got. that's all we got, yeah. If you all have any questions, you know, leave us a comment, email us, however you wanna contact us. We will get back to you. It may take us a little bit, but we will. So if, if you're interested in talking with Highfield, we'll leave a link down in the yeah. description. Yeah, they yeah. have a, a, a calendar link that you can set up an appointment and talk with their recruiter guy. The link will be down in the description. So if you want to check it out, uh, click the links, yeah. fill it out, give them a talk and see, see what, what's possible for you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys as always for watching and subscribing. And until our next video. Peace, love and expediting.